In this video, we're going to take a look at using node analysis techniques to analyze a circuit that's got a dependent source. You'll notice right off the bat that um, we've got a dependent current source here in this branch. And this dependent current source, the, the amount of current that this source is producing, depends upon the current I flowing through the 6 ohm resistor. And this current source then is two times that I. We're going to take that into account as we go through and define our node voltages. And we'll come up with an expression for I in terms of our node voltages. So let's go ahead and get started. We've got three critical nodes again, one here, one here, and one along the bottom. Once again, we'll go ahead and call this our reference node, where we've got V equals zero. And once again, we've got a voltage source tied to the reference, so we know the voltage here at this point of our circuit is equal to 5.3 volts. We'll define this node here to be V1, this node here to be V2, and with those two divine voltages now, we can express I, the current I, in terms of V1 and V2. In fact, I is equal to V1 minus V2 divided by 6 ohms. It's just the voltage here on the left minus the voltage on the right divided by 6 ohms. When we're all done with this analysis, we're going to use that expression to calculate, well, let's say, to calculate the power being produced by this dependent source. With those definitions, let's go ahead and write the node equations at these two nodes. First one here on the left, the current leaving the first node here going to the left is going to be V1 minus 5.3 divided by 4 ohms plus the current coming down here through the 3 ohm resistor is going to be V1 divided by 3, plus the current leaving this node going to the right. Well, notice that that's that current I that's been defined for us. We don't want to use I. We want to use, or we want an expression for that current in terms of the node voltages, V1 and V2. And we've already expressed that I over here as V1 minus V2 divided by 6, so plus V1 minus V2 divided by 6, the sum of those three currents has to equal 0. Now let's write the node equation at the V2 node. The current going to the left is going to be V2 minus V1 divided by 6, plus uh, V2 minus 0 divided by 12, minus, okay, now let's be careful, minus, 2 times I. It's minus because it's referenced into the node. 2 times I is this dependent source, but I don't want to put I in here. We want to write everything in terms of our node variables, or node voltage variables, V1 and V2. So I've got I is equal to 2, or V1 minus V2 divided by 6. This current here is 2 times I, so it's going to be minus 2 times V1 minus V2 divided by 6. The sum of those three currents equals 0. I'd suggest that you stop the, the uh, video right now and just take a look at that. There's a couple of things going on here. The fact that it's going into the node gives us the minus sign. It's going to be minus the current flowing in. Well, the current flowing in is 2 times or is, has a value of 2 times whatever I is. We defined I as V1 minus V2 divided by 6. So we have then minus 2 times V1 minus V2 divided by 6. Alrighty, now that you've taken a, a moment to uh, make sure you understand what we did there with the signs, let's go ahead and solve this system of two equations with two unknowns by combining like terms. For the first equation, we've got V1 times one-fourth plus one-third plus one-sixth plus V2 times, so there's just one V2 term, and that's got a negative one-sixth with it, is equal to negative five divided by four, take it to the other side as, I'm sorry, negative Let's see, it's negative 5.3 divided by 4. Take it to the other side as a positive 5.3 divided by 4. We'll write it like that for now, 5.3 divided by 4. 
Alrighty, the second equation, and here we're going to need to be careful because we've got this uh, stuff going on there with the last term. But once again, factoring out the V1 terms, here I've got a V1 term, and I've got a V1 term here. Let's be careful there. The first one is negative 1 sixth. But what do I actually have over here? I've got negative 2 times V1 divided by 6. So that's negative 2 over 6. That's negative 1 third V1. Factor out the V1, and that leaves me with a negative 1 third there. Alrighty, now for the V2 terms. Plus V2 times. I've got a V2 over 6. Factoring out the V2 leaves me a 1 sixth. I've got a V2 over 12, so plus 1 twelfth. Now, once again, slow down here. You've got signs, and signs are like red flags waving. I mean, slow down. You've got an opportunity to make a sign error, and we don't like sign errors. We've got negative 2 times a negative V2 over 6. Negative times negative is a positive 2V2 over 6. So that's going to be a positive. Factor out the V2. I've got 2 over 6. That's 1 third. And the sum of those three currents equals zero. Once again, I'd encourage you to stop the video at this point and just make sure that you understand what we did with the signs. All righty, let's just be careful here that we keep our equations separate. And now let's go ahead and um, combine the fractions. We've got here then, um, for the first equation, we have V1 times... 1 fourth plus 1 third plus 1 sixth is 3 fourths plus V2 times a negative 1 sixth equals 5.3 divided by 4 is 1.325. And on the second equation, we have V1 times uh, 1 sixth and 1 third, negative 1 sixth minus 1 third is a negative 1 half plus V2 times 1 6 plus 1 twelfth plus 1 third is 7 twelfths and it's positive equals 0. So we've got our two equations there. Once again, plug that into your matrix solver. Use the solve button on your calculator. Even use MATLAB for that matter. And when you do, you'll get that V1 equals 2.1824, 2.1824, and V2 is equal to 1.87. Now, what can we do with V1 and V2? Well, we can do anything we need to do. Just for example on this one, why don't we calculate the power that's being generated by this dependent source? And let's be careful here because we've got issues with reference direction. There's our dependent source. It has a value of 2 times i, referenced going up. Now, what is the voltage across that power supply? Well, it's referenced plus to minus V2. That power supply, that dependent current source, has V2 on the top, and it's tied on the bottom to our reference. So the voltage across that is just V2. Now, we know that power is equal to I times V. And we also know that we've got to be careful about the sign in front of this. Our passive sign convention says that if current is referenced going from the positive to the negative terminal, it will be a positive power. That's not what we have here. In this case, we have the current going up referenced into the negative terminal and out the positive terminal. So that means that we need a minus sign there. Now, what is I? Well, we've got I up here. I is V1 minus V2 divided by 6. So let's go ahead and calculate that. V1 was 2.1824 minus V2, which was 1.87 minus 1.87. And the whole thing divided by 6 that gives us a value for I of um, 0 0.052 amps, or 52 milliamps. So point, point zero 
two amps. Now, this current source right here is equal to it, I sub x, the current that it generates, is equal to two times I. We now know I is point, point zero, point zero five two. So that current source is producing two times point zero five two or point one zero four amps. That's the current that we need down here to calculate the power. This current source is producing 0 0.104 amps going up. So the power down here is going to be equal to negative. I is 0 0.104 times V. Which V did we say it was? It was V2. So times V2, which is 1.87 volts. And when you multiply those two together, you get a negative 0.194 watts. Negative. What does the negative sign mean on power? It means that it's producing energy. It's the source is putting energy into the circuit.